round three of the All Flag State Premier League saw Sterling Lions at home to last year's champions Balcata, who were unbeaten in their opening two games. Balcata in the white strip won a free kick early on, that Shane Nunes hit forward looking for John Thornley, but Corey Hugo was off his line well to punch clear. Steve Burton stole the ball off John Stripe and laid it back to Thornley, who Balcata fans felt was brought down from behind by Craig Robson, but the referee felt otherwise. Soon after, Sterling launched a counter-attack through Matt Harold, who fed Anthony Lyons, who played in Matt Barlow, but he squandered the opportunity. Nunes was then too casual carrying out of defence for Balcata. He lost possession and Jamie D'Abru played in Lyons, but Italiano blocked his effort with a strong right arm. Minutes later, Mustafa Atak was allowed to cut infield and then run across the penalty box unhindered and fire off a shot that was easily saved by Hugo. The second half started with Sterling moving the ball more confidently and O'Callaghan found Clayton Arnez who launched an attack down the right. The cross was whipped in, was miscontrolled by Barlow and struck the arm of Julian Madashi. A penalty to Sterling. Well that's what the players thought but after consulting his assistant, the referee changed his opinion as the ball, in fact, struck Madashi in the chest. Within a minute, Balcata launched a counter-attack through Attack and Burton. Attack's first attempt at a cross was blocked by Jason Gavin, but his second picked out Thornley who lifted the ball over Andy Brown and then hammered it past Hugo. 1-0 to Balcata. Thornley shows great awareness as to where the defender is, lifts the ball past him and then hits the ball on the volley past Hugo. A quality finish from the new signing. Nine minutes later and another break down the right from Lyons. The cross finds O'Callaghan who lifts the ball out to Jamie de Abreu, but as he tries to play it back into the box, it strikes the arm of Madashi, and the referee again pointed to the spot. This time there was no reversal. Up stepped Phil O'Callaghan, who sent Italiano the wrong way, and Sterling were level. As we see on the replay, as De Abreu looks to play the ball back in, it strikes the raised arm of Madashi, leaving the referee no option but to award a penalty. Within five minutes, Balcata's lead was restored. Attack hit a deep cross to the back post, Thornley headed down. Gavin looked to have thwarted Adam Tong, but as the ball lay unattended, Thornley was first to react and toe poked home his and Balcata's second. Thornley's knockdown is a good one. Tong hits the ball into Gavin, who goes to ground and fails to clear. And Thornley, ever the predator, pounces and pokes the ball under Hugo. But Sterling soon had a reply of their own. Substitute Adam Luca robbed John Mills on halfway and found O'Callaghan, who slipped past Madashi and looked to play in Luca. But he let the ball run to Diabru, who finished emphatically past Italiano. Good awareness shown by Adam Luca to let the ball run to Diabru, who sets himself and then calmly sidefoots past Italiano. Two all. But within two minutes, Sterling appeared to have committed football suicide. Mills hit a hopeful ball forward which was nowhere near a teammate. Gavin under hit his back pass straight to Attack, who easily went past Hugo and rolled the ball into the back of the net. A rare miscalculation by the normally reliable Gavin. Attack eases past Hugo and rolls the ball home. But Sterling kept battling for another equaliser. And with five minutes to go, a Dennis Gallon free kick found O'Callaghan at the edge of the penalty area. He easily turned Madashi and was blatantly chopped down as he looked to pull away. Another penalty to Sterling. 
This time Italiano went the right way but O'Callaghan's shot had too much power and Sterling were level again. On the replay there is no doubt Midashi has been beaten and blatantly trips O'Callaghan. In fact he was lucky to escape a card of any colour. Both teams went in search of a winner but time was against them and the final score was Sterling Lions 3, Balcata 3. So we're here with the coach of the Sterling Lions, Doug Hexeth. Uh, both sides uh, held, had patches today of uh, really good form. Would have been nice to uh, claim all three points, wouldn't it? Yeah, a little disappointed it got away from us really in the end, but I think this is a new team we've put together and I think we showed tremendous character to come back three times. Um, I'm probably a little bit unfortunate not to get a decision here and there that could have won us the game, so I'm very pleased with the efforts and a couple of mistakes, but you know we'll get better every week. You know We're playing the champions today, so we're proud of our performance. Uh, a pretty controversial second half, to say the least. Every time, every time they did pull away, though, you got got one back. It really highlights the mental toughness of your side, doesn't it? Yeah, I think one of the things that we've really tried to do with the lads we've got is blend a, a good group um, with youth and experience. I think our experienced players through the back, through the middle, and up front are very mature. And I think the younger players will just get better every week playing alongside them, but they all displayed a very tough attitude to want to win this game today. Pretty fast and physical encounter. How are the boys feeling after the game? Yeah, there's, there's like a war zone in there. Anthony Lyons has got his head all bandaged up and, uh, yeah, there's a few uh, sword and soddy bodies, but um, they'll bounce back on Tuesday to train and then hopefully we can apply ourselves against the NTC next week.